Hi guys and welcome to my in-depth comparison between the Dell Express 13 2015 model and the Apple MacBook Pro Retina 13. This is the late 2013 model, not 14 or something like that or 15, but since it didn't change so much, it is still comparable, I think. I won't go into all the details, just the important ones, because I made a single review for each one. So if you want to know more about each specific ones, check those. But this will be a direct comparison and should take. So let's just not waste any more time and start with the design and build quality. And you can also jump through the time codes if you want to. Okay, design and build quality. I think it is pretty obvious how much smaller the Dell actually is. As you can maybe see here, if we stack it against, there is... A big difference it is a bit not that much narrower but therefore quite a big but the most obvious thing here is the weight because this one is 1.2 kilograms and this one is okay with the sticker it's 1.6 but about 1.56 1.58 kilograms and you will definitely feel the difference so in terms of ports there's not a big difference as you can see here you get one USB on one side, one on the other, mini display port, the speaker, here you get the other USB and the full size SD card. So in terms of ports, that's not a big difference. The only thing we have here is two Thunderbolt 2. But if you don't have any Thunderbolts like I, it doesn't really make a difference. Otherwise the same here. USB, you have HDMI instead of display port and the full size SD card slot. So in terms of ports, they are pretty much on par, I would say. Of course, in terms of, if you just check the design and weight, of course, this one definitely wins because it just is so much smaller and lighter. And it's definitely the more portable thing. In terms of build quality, there's not a real big difference. Both are made of aluminum. Both are very sturdy. In my opinion, this one feels a little bit more solid, but it's not really by much. And just by the way, what I, one thing I wanted to mention, if you think I'm biased because this is my personal one, my answer is no, I'm not. Yeah, that's all I can say. So if it's just for the design of the outer shell, then this wins clearly because it is smaller, lighter, and still very robust, super sturdy, and just better. But for me, that's not all about design and build quality because there are still keyboard and trackpad included. At least I like to include those in my design and build quality test so I will compare these as well so let's take a look at the keyboard now and one funny thing is if you touch both yeah <laughs> for some reason if two touch one or the other turns off not really sure why okay just one small thing it is maybe not noticeable but the Dell XPS can get like one or two, a few degrees more back. It's not really much as you can see here. This is the maximum here. And on the Dell, the maximum is here. So it's not a whole lot. And I think both can go back way more than enough in my opinion. Okay, as you can see, it, it just looks like the screen is smaller on the, on the XPS, but it's not. Okay, due to the different aspect ratio because this one is 16.10. And this one 16.9 this actually feels for me bigger not just because of the of this but th that's not the thing okay let's check the keyboards now so let's put them right now both are very nice no problems here at all i already told this in my review that this one has about a millimeter narrower buttons therefore one millimeter more of gap it is four millimeters instead of three and in whole this one is seven millimeters wider this one, as you can see, if you can hear, is a little bit louder and more clickier. This one, if you, if you can hear, if you actually type, it's way more quiet. And I really like this while typing at night also. It's just more comfortable. Also, what I really like is the slight, like, soft touch coating, which makes it very grippy while typing. This one doesn't have this, in, but it's not, not slippery or anything like that. In terms of feedback... I almost prefer this one, but what I don't like so much is the key travel. We only have, as far as I know, 1.3 millimeters on the Dell and the usual 1.8. And you will notice this because here you have quite a hard bottoming out. 
and here we have a soft one where you notice you can when you are at the bottom there is just a little bit where you get softer so this is just more comfortable and in the end due to the slightly i think superior layout I prefer this one because I can type faster and with less mistakes and I'm not a great typer on my own. So I noticed I made more mistakes. You can type great on both. I was a little bit faster on this one, a bit more accurate. Doesn't say this one is bad, but this one is pretty much in line with the best. So their Latitude series and some of the Lenovo ThinkPads. This is in line with that, even though Lenovo ThinkPad and um, the the latitude have these nicer textures on the button and even softer typing so these maybe are maybe even superior but due to the layout here this one is on par with those this one is not it is not even on par with the xps i tested so far it is still on a very high level but thinkpad latitude and even some xps just have the better keyboard as for the trackpad now the clear winner is here both on the on the apple because both have glass this is nice but the apple has the perfect friction level you have no sticky feeling no no slippery feeling but you have the precision you need this one is almost a little bit too smooth and therefore i lack precision when i want to type something really precise and the scrolling is the biggest difference as you can see here i will do the same flick and you will notice how different they scroll as you can see, the Apple scrolls so much more with a so much smaller flick. Because if I use the same flick as you can see here, the Apple scrolls so much faster. And this was annoying because I had to scroll like a crazy man here. And that was annoying. Where here, I can make one big flick and I'm at half of the page or let's say a third. If I do it once again, I can get to one page with three flicks. If I try the same here, wow. I need like more than double that as you can see that was annoying you cannot adjust these things but out of the box it just shouldn't be that big of a difference also you have way more options here you have multi-finger gestures like as you can see here I can jump between my apps no issues here I can do nothing than two screen of uh, two finger gestures Dell had some time where they had this software where we had a few limited options with multi-finger gestures but now that's not anymore the case otherwise they work quite well it is one of the better delts in terms of two finger recognition because usually they have an issue but this is the clear winner we have all those gestures we have a way better and also the click as you can see this this sounds like a good click this sounds a bit cheap in my opinion so i can't make this any more clear so i think i covered that design and build quality as a whole i would give the dell the win even though just because this one is bigger and so on it's, it's a bit more solid though keyboard this wins and trackpad as well so now i'm going to get about it, the display and i can't i can't zoom i can't really zoom in because as you can see here it's hard enough to get both on the screen so you will just have to live with that so let's check the display we have 2560 by 1600 so 16 by 10 on the apple macbook at retina pro and we have 1080p matte here and this is maybe not the fairest comparison because the, in terms of resolution because this one of course is sharper just because it has the higher resolution but there is a 3200 by 1800 version he, here as well but then the advantage is still on the macbook because it has the better scaling which still isn't by far perfect on windows so if you don't want to have any trouble with scaling and the sharpest experience then this one is the winner that's about all i can say and i also prefer actually 16 by 10 if you check the whites now quite obviously both seem wrong on this picture because i already told you once you see red on my screen this means there is too much yellow but i don't know in, in person it it actually looks like when i look now it, it almost looks a little bit reddish but i would say this is the better white this one is definitely too cold I actually like cold, but maybe due to the anti-glare coating, it just doesn't vibrate as much because you can see both are at 100% brightness. And in person, this one looks a whole lot brighter. No, maybe it doesn't make a difference, but you will see this in the next pictures. But I give this win to the white here because not that I have a problem with this being too cold, but it 
just doesn't seem white. It is also more slightly grayish. I, I think it's maybe an issue of the anti-glare. Of course, you will have way less glare here, uh, way more glare here because it is a glare panel. Blacks, from these pictures, you can't tell a winner, but I can tell you here the Dell is the clear winner by far because it has a very deep black and it's especially great for watching videos and so on. But the good thing is if I type on, for example, JDark Room with a black background and white text, I can use this because this is the black. It doesn't shine through or anything. Also, a little bit less light bleeding. I have a little bit light bleeding here, but not anything to mention. But the thing on the Apple MacBook Pro is the black is quite obviously bluish and it has too much back, uh, back, backlight. So you will notice this thing down because I couldn't use this with a black background and type because it just wasn't black enough. Here it is pretty much obvious, I think. Even on the video, this one seems so much more vivid, so much more vibrant. And this in person just seems a little bit dull. And that's a little bit of an issue that I had. I am pretty sure if I would have the glare version with 3200 by 8100, it, it would be much closer because due to this anti-glare, which I just personally don't like so much, everything seems a little bit covered up. The colors are Maybe even more accurate here, but I definitely enjoy these much more. These are just more enjoyable. They are look way more plastic. You have more depth in it. The contrast just seems better. This is a very nice 1080p panel, but in comparison with this, it just completely fails to impress. So as you can see here also, or maybe on the next picture, both get the details quite nice so it's not that it almost seems like this oversaturates a bit but this is a really hard picture but you can see both details very nice but you just see more details due to the high resolution here same as here there are just more details and it's just the way more vibrant screen so the winner here is definitely this if you prefer anti-glare then of course this one is the winner let's get to the sound check so not to make it too long Okay, I will start with this. Both are at 100 maximum and the both best sound settings. So. Okay, and now to the Apple. Okay, so what do I think? And actually, this is quite hard for me to grasp because I always thought the MacBook had a really good sound until I heard those both in a direct comparison because I said this one sounds a bit flat and a little bit shallow in my review, but hearing them with a distance, so, so one day this and one day this, you don't notice it that much because this one in overall sounds always great. For YouTube videos, like I said, it does distort quite a bit with the sound, it's just not mixed that well. But in this direct comparison, you notice it. This one is a little bit louder, I can't really say how much, 10-15%, like something like that. But it is also, it has actually the fuller sound, the richer sound. But this was more maybe a, a good song, because if this one gets a little bit more complex music, it will compress and then the sound will be kind of washed. But from what I get in a direct comparison, this actually sounds better. But both are still very great sounding, can't really complain. This one seems like it has a little bit of bass, but it seems more like in, in this kind of music, it seemed the stereo effect was quite nice, but usually it seems more like mono if you watch something like YouTube, which actually most of the times is mono, but both have a great sound. I would give this the slight edge though. As for the performance, and I don't really want to show off because what a lot, there is not a lot I can show off. If you can see, this one is scrolling super smooth in Internet Explorer. This one is scrolling super smooth in Extra Explorer. For Chrome, I give this the slight edge because of the scrolling. The scrolling in Chrome just isn't the best. But yeah, I don't care. The scrolling just isn't the best here because like I showed you already, and this is even more obvious. As for the general performance though, if you do video editing and so on, I give this the win. This one has the Intel Iris graphics, which is more powerful, but at least for me in Adobe Premiere, this one 
performed quite a lot of better. Usually one minute of rendering for a video in my settings with Adobe Premiere needs three and a half minutes, let's say three, three and a half minutes. This one took two minutes. So for video editing, it is the maybe better choice. I can't really say if maybe something supports better, but if it's just about that. And in general, this device feels a little bit more lightweight. Of course, this, the browser here with Safari, I give it a slight edge because Safari feels a little bit lighter, but Internet Explorer does a great job, absolutely amazing, but it's about power. If you use on both Chrome, then it's pretty much up on power. And you don't notice that much difference in daily life, but ever so slightly, I would give this the win. Next would be the battery. This one charges to 99% in two hours. This one to 100. This one it's three hours, they'll to 100 but like I said this is 1% so both charge well enough if you charge it overnight anyway so, so it doesn't matter but it's about the battery life. This one is rated with the Dell is rated with 15 hours of use and if you saw my review you know I didn't get anywhere near that. I got like maybe what was it it was like six hours but I also reached eight hours. On this one, I did it first, but my usage changed and so on. And you have to use Safari if you want great battery life on the Apple. If you use Chrome, your battery life won't go over four hours maybe. So I'm usually at about five, close to six hours. At this, I'm at solid six hours and with the possibility to even reach eight hours. So quite a difference. So I give this the win, but both have a quite good battery life. In theory, if you trust all the reviews, this one should be way better, which it isn't for me, but... Also, you have to remember one thing, this is the 2014 model. The 2015 model is about one or two hours better in terms of battery because they both use Broadwell done. So that's about that. In terms of noise, the Apple is the clear winner because I can render a movie for two hours or so and it won't make any noise. It, I barely ever hear the fan and this one is only silent once doing nothing, as, as long as you're doing nothing. If you only do basic tasks like browsing the web, word processing and watching a video. This one is also completely silent Be besides the little bit of coil one. You can hear it about a distance of 30 centimeters. And it was one of the quieter coil ones. I had already Dell devices, but it was way more obvious. You hear some kind of coil one here where the chip is. This one, the Apple doesn't have this. But once you put a bit load on the Dell, it gets way louder. I wouldn't say loud. Of course, both can be loud if they are on full power. And I think the Apple is even a little bit louder if this on full power. But I never have this spinning on full power with this can be quite easily done. If I do webcamming, record the webcam. And yesterday I even did a hangout. And during this hangout, the fan was spinning almost all the time. And it is not the, it's not the best fan sound. It's because you can hear a quite fast spinning. So it's not a high pitched noise, but it is not as subtle as I noticed on some other devices. This one can spin in a very low position, the, the Apple, where you almost don't hear it, which this one, when it spins, it is noticeable. It's not bad in any, by any means, but still by far better because you almost never hear it. Next thing would be the software and this is a big difference. I can't almost, I could make a whole video just for that as a whole, but I will make it really quick. Windows for me itself is the better OS. It just has more capabilities and everything for me works easier besides of drivers. If you don't, if you have drivers set up and everything, Windows is the better one because I have a little bit of trouble getting some things done on the Mac sometimes mostly because of network things, it, they just quirk out. But where the Apple has the upper hand for me is some certain apps, at least the ones I use, because I have typed here for typing, for blogging and so on. Where I have the best I can get on the on a Windows machine is JDark Room for me. And typed is so much better. I also get a little bit better podcast support and I can record my webcam better because the third party software I got here for $5 allows me to get for some reason way better video quality of my webcam than the Dell did. That was quite disappointing. So for what I have to do in terms of blogging and YouTubing, the software is more convenient and more comfortable to use on the Apple. But if I wouldn't do this, then I would actually go for, for the Windows because it's more straightforward and just works more reliable in my opinion. 
Okay, I did it quite a lot, almost 20 minutes, just a quick recap. And then it's up for you to decide, I guess. Design and build quality just for the size, the Dell wins. Keyboard and trackpad, the Apple wins. Because it is, the trackpad is a whole lot better and the keyboard is a little bit more comfortable on the longer side. Display, the clear winner here for me is the Apple. With the 3200 by 800 it could maybe get a bit closer, but as it is right now. Sound, I give a, a, a win to the Dell. Not by really a whole lot, but still it did sound better and there was way less distortion and I hate the distortion sometimes on Apple because it's sometimes really unbearable. Performance, both great performers, both absolutely convincing, both really top ones and pretty much the best of the bunch. This one isn't the most actual device, the most recent one, so the most, the newest device could even be a little bit better and then they would be on par, but for me, as I have them right now, this one slightly wins, but yeah, I would really like to have the new one, but yeah, it's okay. Software, something for you to decide. If you are open for both or if you maybe plan to do on YouTubing and podcasting and blogging and so on, this could maybe be the more convenient version. But if you do things like coding and just video editing and so on, then this one is a solid solution and a more reliable, robust thing, at least in my opinion. But it's really, an, uh, you, it's, I know it's really hard to compare two devices that are so, in, so different because of the OS. For me, the OS doesn't matter. I can do pretty much both on each other but for what I do I can do it a little bit better because of the nicer apps on the Apple it doesn't say I couldn't do this here as well yeah but battery life heat and noise I forgot those battery life wins the Dell the Apple has still great battery life and the new one should even get an hour so it will be closer but this one should in theory at least be better but in terms of noise the Apple just wins by a quite a big margin so I will close them up. And one thing I wanted to actually show, and this is annoying and I forget it every time. I can easily open this with one hand. I can adjust it. No problems here at all. But try this with an Apple. No, no. And with a Dell. It just doesn't work. You need two hands because the hinge is just too stiff. I can't, if you can see, even when it's open, it will go up and I will need a second hand. But this one, I can adjust it easily. So know how they did this with the hinge here because it is very stiff as you can see it doesn't wobble at all or I mean it does a little bit but this one the whole device wobbles actually if I lose because it's so lightweight but the hinge is just too stiff and they in my opinion should work on this because it's a small thing but I really pr pretty much every time open my device with one hand and due to this odd angle actually as you can see here there is nothing to grab on because it will just slide off there is an angle which I found to be good, but yeah. Okay, I think the video was long enough. I gave you all that I think I had to give you to make a decision to give you all the pros and cons. And if I forgot something or if you want to know anything specific about each other, just let me know in the comments and let me know what you think, if you maybe had the experience to try it both. But keep in mind, I know a lot of people because of Apple always say you are an Apple fanboy and so on. I see the objective as what I can do on each other for my needs. There are people who have completely different use case scenarios with coding and I don't know what else. And they don't need all these fancy apps. Then this one is a great choice. But right now for this package here, it's mostly, almost mostly for me as a quite maybe superficial person to display. I just can't see myself using this display on the longer time, but cause it just didn't impress me, which this one, I don't know, Apple displays are so amazing, but yeah, I will just cut this off. Let me know what you think. Until next time, bye. I'll be back.